While today the U.S.-Canada border may be the longest undefended international boundary in the world, in the War of 1812, over 200 years ago, an island in Lake Huron was the scene of major conflict. With us now from the nation's capital on the significance of Mackinac Island, our Northeast Ontario Hub journalist, Nick Dunn. Hey, Nick. Hi, Joanne. All right, so before we get into some of Ontario's history, let's talk about the War of 1812. Remind us who was involved and what led up to it. Yeah, so it was uh, part of the larger Napoleonic Wars, you know, a kind of a global conflict uh, centered around Europe, uh, Napoleon Bonaparte and uh, its colonies. Uh, but this one actually had to do too much with Napoleon himself at this time. You know, the, the United States had just gone under the uh, War of Independence, uh, but the British were still kind of asserting themselves on the coast. They were really preventing a whole lot of trade from occurring uh, across the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, so as all this conflict is going on, um, you know, in Europe, uh, it, it became a, a critical juncture for the United States to really assert some sovereignty and uh, declare war on the British uh, by attacking uh, Upper Canada, Lower Canada, which we know today as uh, Ontario and Quebec. All right, so let's talk a little bit about that. How exactly was that region impacted and affected by this war? Yeah, so, I mean, Fort St. Joseph uh, and Fort Mackinac are right by Sault Ste. Marie, uh, kind of in the uh, western part of Lake Huron. Uh, this is really, really far away, actually, from the main um, battles and the main theaters of war at the time. But um, this was also a critical juncture in the fur trade. That was the main, uh, you know, economic engine of uh, our nation at the time. You know, people would be able to go from the St. Lawrence River all the way to um, Lake Huron. That connects them to Lake Superior, which gets them to Western Canada. Um, so very critical juncture, even though it was effectively an outpost uh, for Europeans to, um, you know, trade with and uh, create uh, relations with the indigenous peoples in these areas. So that was the real significance of the area, uh, even though it was so far away from those main theaters of battle. So it's July 1812. I understand there is uh, some double agents, there's some indigenous uh, groups and warriors, and uh, maybe not so much bloodshed. Share a little bit about that. Yeah, it's a really, really interesting conflict. So basically in uh, June, uh, June 18, 1812, war is declared. The United States declares war. But uh, news of this war doesn't really get to uh, Lieutenant Porter Hanks in, uh, in Fort Mackinac, way out uh, in northern Michigan at the time. Um, Isaac Brock had been... Uh, talking with uh, Charles Roberts, the British uh, commanding officer at the time at Fort St. Joseph, about declaring war, and there had been some back and forth. Uh, thankfully, um, you know, voyageurs, the fur traders at that time, were very skilled at traveling these networks, and they were able to pass information quite quickly, which was really helpful for us. And so um, about a month into the war, they finally uh, get news that there's war <laughs> and, uh, you know, go ahead to Fort Mackinac. It's a very, again, important for it, despite it being so far and uh, relatively small. So at the time, though, uh, the fort was garrisoned by a very small garrison, a lot of older troops. There are some reports of uh, drunkenness um, and, you know, imbibing of <laughs> substances, right? Uh, so they, they, they recruited uh, voyageurs from the Northwest Company and uh, a whole uh, levy of troops from various indigenous nations, including Garden River. And they stormed the fort, which you can see right here. Um, you know, just kind of uh, to the north of the fort was a very large hill. So they knew that's where, you know, they could, you know, seize this fort. Um, and as all this is happening, there's a lot of, um, you know, uh, you know, ships, canoes, action heading towards St. Joseph. And Porter Hanks sees this, and he's a little bit suspicious, even though he doesn't know there's... Uh, a war going on. So he sends out a trader by the name of Michael Dousman uh, out to kind of check out the scene at uh, Fort St. Joseph. Dousman unfortunately gets captured and uh, they tell him, the British, to, uh, you know, help us out, maybe clear out uh, the civilian population because Fort St. Joseph and Fort Mackinac were basically 
very close to each other. You know, there are a lot of families, um, you know, people married together. It, it was a very kind of communal area, even though we were, you know, two different uh, countries ostensibly. Um, and so uh, he does this. He doesn't notify the garrison, though. Um, and uh, they, they storm the, the, the north of the fort. They get out to the back. Uh, up on the hill, they set up some cannons, and without a single uh, cannon shot, without a single gunshot, or any kind of casualty, uh, it's one of the first engagements in the war, and they they successfully take Fort Mackinac um, from uh, from Porter Hanks and the Americans, and uh, this is a, a critical um, mistake that they didn't get to uh, communicate with Fort Mackinac quick enough. Um, this would, even though, again, relatively small engagement in the larger war, would play a pretty major role in securing these indigenous alliances um, in uh, northwestern and uh, northeastern uh, Ontario. And then from there, uh, played a role in the siege of uh, Detroit, where we actually captured Detroit for a brief period of time back then. So we do have a painting that I want to uh, pull up. Can you tell us what we're looking at here? Again, this is, you know, life uh, on the fort. I think it really represents the Sault Ste. Marie area at that time. It was known as a gathering place, again, between voyagers, between various uh, American and European settlers and all these indigenous nations at the time. Um, a very kind of critical juncture uh, in the fur trade and um, a very unique area in this country at the time where there was a, a lot of relations and a lot of uh, reciprocity between, you know, all these different groups. Now, we should mention that Mackinac Island right now currently is obviously uh, American. Uh, it was uh, signed over during the treaty of, in 1815. But I do want to ask about uh, lasting effects of this event. Uh, you know, is there any sort of lasting effect? Um, you know, is there any kind of memorials as well in that area? Yeah, you know, that's, that, that's a great question. I mean, the Treaty of Ghent in 1815 kind of you know, set things aside and it was effectively, you know, uh, uh, nothing was really gained or lost particularly. Um, but, you know, it, this helps secure again, Northwest Passage uh, out to Western Canada. So that's a very significant there. Also um, on the flip side, it, in securing that border, uh, it, it kind of left those um, Anishinaabek nations along uh, Northern Michigan uh, to deal with the United States. And this actually caused a number of um, communities there to resettle on Manitoulin Island, which isn't too far away from the area. That's the world's largest freshwater island, uh, you know, a, a, a very important and a beautiful island uh, out in Lake Huron, uh, kind of a jewel of uh, northern Ontario, really. So, you know, even though this was a minor engagement and uh, the war is kind of, you know, come and gone, you know, there, there are some pretty significant uh, impacts that uh, resonate to this day for many people, you know, uh, on Manitoulin Island, on St. Joseph Island, uh, and Mackinac itself. Nick, I want to thank you so much. I'm sure this is a story that not a lot of Ontarians know about, so thank you for that. Yeah, thanks. The Agenda in the Summer with Nam Kiwanuka is made possible through generous philanthropic contributions from viewers like you. Thank you for supporting TVO's journalism.